Hello everyone, watch this review here where they look at the DC Collectibles Parademon from the New 52 line. Now, while I haven't really been keeping up with the New 52, I generally don't read comics so much as I wait for the movies, cartoons, and so forth to come out. Occasionally I'll pick up an anthology. I have been looking at the character designs and the figures sort of accompanying the line. And immediately the Parademon sort of jumped out to me. He's a really cool looking army builder. I saw the display at um, San Diego Comic-Con, or any San Diego Comic-Con footage, with dozens of these things posed against the Justice League, or actually might have just been a dozen. So, you know, as soon as I saw these sort of go up, it became something of a must-own, and at roughly 20 bucks, you know, there is some value here, given these are larger figures. Uh, not quite as large as I thought, though. I had assumed that they'd be almost up to Killer Croc's height, but it looks like they might only be up to his uh, chest, but yeah, you know, it's still pretty huge. Uh, hold on a second until I get them or get one of them out of pack. Out of box, the Parademon is well a pretty nice display piece, but the articulation is kind of weak. As you'll notice, you know, really awesome sculpting here, decent paint. They have a sort of shiny gold for a lot of it. And then, like, little imprints and stuff for, um, between the panels. I mean, it's just like a sort of tannish brown. It's pretty cool. Uh, the one thing that I dislike about the, I'm not sure if it's so much the figure or design or what have you, is stuff like this where you have this crap poking out of his arm. I mean, it's painted like it's part of his body, but it looks like it might just be cables. It's confusing. That might just be me, though. Now, I'm guessing they're kind of fused to their cybernetic armor or whatever, so they're kind of cy like cyborgs from the general cords and wires and everything, sort of running the length of the body. I mean, otherwise, I would have just assumed that this is sort of normal armor on them, but, you know, it's probably techno-organic or something. Yeah. Um, size, kind of variable. Here's the Wave 6 Superman from the DC Universe Classics line. I will most likely be displaying these with my normal stuff here. I don't really collect the DC Collectibles line for the conventional figures, you know, because it's got less articulation, what have you. But, uh, because of the whole knees and legs and stuff, you can actually sort of get them to be in several different heights. This can either have them be almost at his full height here, by the way, these are hinged hips, then hinged knees, so it does sort of restrict movement, or you can have them kind of squat a little bit to, you know, sort of be closer to height to the other characters. You know, still you'll have, you know, just a tremendous bulk here, which is really cool. Now I did pick up two, I was sort of debating, do you pick up two, do you pick up three of this army builder? So when you're taking photographs, you really only need more than one. I mean, it'd be cool to have like five or ten just for like epic display all at once, but at the same time, you could just pick up two or three and then just take a photo of them in various poses, and then it sort of works as well. It saves you about a hundred bucks that way, but... You know, I did figure I'd get at least two to start. Maybe if I really like them, I'll get a third. At this point, I think I might just stick to the two, though. Because as cool as they are, as sort of well detailed and what have you, you know, there's just not a lot you can do with them in terms of articulation. And to give you some idea, the articulation is as follows. They have a ball-jointed head, which I haven't actually broken in yet. A little bit up-down, then, you know, full range of rotation. Ball-jointed shoulders, the shoulder pads seem to be hinged but you can't get them out a ton even with the sort of hinged shoulder pads. Bicep rotation, single pin here at the elbow, okay range. Now rather than have rotation here at the, I guess sort of wrist, we have it up here at the forearm. I guess it's slightly better concealed, but just given the way it's laid out, you'd think they'd do that as well. I don't know, I guess it's sort of a cost-saving measure. Uh, no waste articulation which is something of a disappointment. I understand why they didn't do it, because he's got sort of full sculpting going all the way down, but all the same, you know, it is something that I like to see. 
I mean, I suppose, you know, arguably, just depending on how you position the legs and stuff, it looks like he's kind of swinging his arms out there. So, yeah. Once again, sort of uh, hinged hips and the knees. Not a lot of range here. A lot more range on the knee. And then down at the ankle, it's got forward back. It feels like it's kind of got side motion, but it's hard to tell whether I'm just breaking it. And then it can't seem to really rotate. I don't know, all in all, you know, you do get some decent amount of posability here, despite the sort of limitations. I'm also wondering if they should have painted that little portion in there or... Yeah. It's probably not important. So, yeah, I mean, definitely a very cool looking figure. I would recommend picking up at least one of them. Uh, two, probably more likely, just because you would want to sort of display them together. They are army builders and all, but, you know, even one, there is sort of an epic feel to them. Pretty large figure, you know, good amount of detail. You know, solid paintwork, not a lot of paint variation, shadowing, what have you. It's I suppose more of a solid paint job, which I guess could reflect the art style or what have you. I haven't read the new stuff, so I don't know. And of course you do get some amount of reflection because the paint has that sort of glittering effect for the armor. But this has been a look at the DC Collectibles uh, Parademon. I do somewhat like this one. I mean, I wouldn't say he's incredible, but, you know, it's still a pretty good figure, if not a great figure. You know, definitely a lot cooler Parademon design than some of the other ones we've seen in the past. So, um, until next time, folks. Two additional things I quickly want to address. Uh, first off, I didn't point out, or didn't call attention to the fact that he has little battle damage and stuff in the armor. You'll notice uh, little scrapes, dents, and so forth throughout it. Which, you know, is always kind of cool detailing, except for when you have, like, a bunch of them together and they all have the exact same body damage, armor damage, it's just kind of weird. Uh, the other thing is, I think the facial detail is kind of weak in it where it comes to the teeth. I mean, the teeth aren't really sharp points, and then if you look at how the paint is done, you know, the silver kind of runs up to a point, and then it's got this sort of reddish lip thing. I don't know, something about the level of detail just looks kind of weak, and then, of course, the inner mouth... It's just a sort of bland paint. It's the same basic color you see down here. They should have really used a darker shade. It shouldn't have been reflective. But, you know, those are really kind of small, minor gripes.